Hello, hello, hello. What is going on, people? Welcome back to the Landing Strip Podcast. I am your host, Conrad Bastian. Today I have a another guest. Um, the guests from earlier episodes are not available, so they won't be on today. But um, I guess first, let me get this out the way. I am on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. These will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, what else I got? TikTok. Yes. Yeah, so uh, don't be shy. Come say hi. All right. My guest today, actually, we used to run a, pod, a podcast together. It was a real estate podcast. So this this should make for an interesting talk. This is Mr. Stefan Martin. Stefan, are you there? Good, good. What's up, people? Happy to be on the landing strip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, full disclosure and transparency, this is something we just decided to, to do. I said, hey, well, actually, you came to me and said, hey, let me jump on it, right? Yep. Okay, There's so we don't. Oh yeah, I appreciate it. Um, now what I like, like I was explaining to you, I kind of like the authenticity. I don't per se have a, a specific direction to go with this podcast. I want us to kind of just talk, you know. Well, actually, let me just tell the story. Right, and you know, even before I started doing this, I told you, you know, I was like, uh, you know, I, I have so many great conversations with so many people, and I just want to start sharing them because it's. I think it's just good to be able to for other people to hear you know good things especially good positive things or you know what even gossip sometimes is cool but um yeah definitely. what 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 you want to talk about um oh, okay i can throw something out there sure well first uh, like i said you're doing your thing with this um i think it was uh you put me on to les brown and les brown said something oh, yeah. a hundred times he said uh just get started, right? It's it's anything worth doing uh-huh. is worth doing bad until you can do it good, bad, until, yes, badly, sir. until you can uh, get it right. And so I like the fact that um, after our conversation, I was like, okay, download the audacity, do the this, do the that, edit, use the uh, noise cancel cancellation. And you, <laughs> you were like, you know what? Let me just upload this <laughs> this podcast. To YouTube. <laughs> and that's that's it right there. That, that's definitely it. Just get started. You know what? I agree. I agree with <clears throat> everything you said, and I'm noticing more and more people kind of reiterating that because the reality is the first iPhone. I'm sure I never owned an iPhone for you know <laughs> disclosure, but I'm sure the first one was not as good as the one that's out now. So you know, I, I do think it's important for progress as part of the process instead of just you know. Well, actually, so the saying I heard was, if you're not embarrassed by your first rendition or episode or whatever, you waited too long to put it out. I like that. So I like that yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, that, that basically just embodies the fact that, yo, get started and, and progress as you go. Yeah. yeah so so yeah, we've been yeah. friends a, a, a long time um, from like sixth grade. And it's yep, funny because yep. life is a tale. Yeah, oh yeah. Different paths, we've gone through ups and downs, each one of us. And so it's good some um, 10 years later, wait, like if, if we do the math, what is that like? Close to 20 years later. Oof. Yeah, dude, for real. Yeah, you were one of the first people we met when, when I moved to Co-op City in the Bronx. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And I lived right in that building, that Chevron building, which I actually remember. You lived in um, the end of a triple core, right? Right. So we were like literally maybe two, like a thousand, two thousand feet away from each other. Yeah. So that's, yep. that's cool. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things, because I am an avid listener of the uh, Landing Strip, one of the things that um, mm-hmm. struck me is when you and your brother Duval were talking about how you got to have a certain level of pain to, uh, mm-hmm. to move forward. And a lot of people avoid that pain. And, you know, mm-hmm. we want, uh, instant gratification. We want to feel good now. We'll deal with the consequences later. And we think later is never going to come. And so I wanted to kind of build off of that. Because that's important. What you guys said is important. Um, I think what a lot of people don't really realize is that you can do all of that. You can be disciplined. You can bring yourself to the next level. You can do everything you need to do. The bottom line, though, is that right there is just your entry pass into the next level. Right. And so, you know... Like, there have been times where I've been super fit. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly fit now. I'm the strongest I've ever been. But um, there were times where 
I was on a diet and I was really running and I was running like crazy and ran like five Ks and everything like that. Mm. And really, really got into sh a certain level of shape aerobically that I'd never been before. And I tell this story, there's a story about me enrolling in a race called the Sunny Post Mile. And so I was, I'm a 5K runner. I like to, well, I'm not a 5K runner, but I like to run middle distances. It's just, it's a long enough time where you get to clear your head. It's a personal challenge. You, you run long enough in the, uh, the scenery changes. Like I'm over here, I'll run from my house or where I live to Orchard Beach. And then sometimes I'll run down to Pelham Bay Park and I'll run into the Bronx. And so you get to see, like you get to see woods and you get to see beach and you get yeah. to see city and you get to see park and it's it's a nice scenic route and you know you run for 45 minutes you clear your head and you feel good at the end of it let me so, ask you this though because yeah, just for the the ignorant people like myself uh -huh. I, I i don't remember i i used to believe a 5k meant you ran you ran 5,000 miles so i know that that's not what it means what is a 5k it's five kilometers so about three five kilometers. 3.2 miles gotcha okay so so right. okay yeah, so I, I enrolled, I, I like doing that. And, you know, I, I my friend um, and my, we used to be co-workers, but we remained friends after that. Uh, she got me into running this this race called the Tunnel to Towers, where you start in uh, Brooklyn, you start in Brooklyn, and you run through the tunnel that connects Brooklyn and Manhattan. Come out the other side, you're out right by the World Trade Center, you run around the World Trade Center, and then finish and so it's a beautiful scenic run. And one year I was super fit and ready to do it. And so in anticipation of that, I, another coworker of mine who's also a friend was a volunteer for this thing called, this race called the uh, Sunny Post Mile. It's just a mile race. And it's in Sunnyside, Queens. You just run around like two or three blocks. And I'd never done a mile before. And I knew I could, like at that point, I could just sprint the whole thing. So I was feeling good about it. And I was like, I can do this. And so I was in good shape. I, the month before I started running regularly, sprinting down, sprinting miles, sprinting down the block. My usual run was uh, about seven miles. I would sprint the first mile, no, sorry, six miles. And I sprint the first mile and I was feeling good. We got to that race, right? First of all, everybody, this race was in like August. Running season starts in the spring, like mm -hmm. March. Okay. It starts to, when, the, when the weather, as the weather is like the last bit of cold, as the weather's starting to turn, just before it turns. And so okay. people have been running since March. And so the, the bodies that were out there in August, everybody was so lean and so fit and ready mm. to go. And I look at myself like, I'm, I'm not a skinny dude. I'm, I'm not fat, but I'm, I'm, I'm built, you know, like right. I'm not a skinny dude. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at everybody like, whoa, these guys are so lean. And I'm like, I don't care, man. I, I got muscle. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this. That race goes. Once like everybody's getting ready to get doing the stretches, and I'm I'm just amped. I'm amped. I'm ready. I'm like almost nervous because I'm like I'm gonna run this thing so fast. Once that race goes, everybody starts running so fast. <laughs> <laughs> like it's literally like there's dogs chasing us, and I'm like I'm in the middle, and I am running full speed. We make the first turn. I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling good. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a square, right? But it's just a mile long square. And we make okay. the second turn. And I'm like, yeah. And everybody else is still running. Nobody has slowed down. I'm passing some people, but there's people in front of me, right? We mm -hmm. hit that third turn. And I'm like, yo, I don't know if I can continue to sprint like this. I am yeah, running the fastest me. I've ever run. Ooh. And, and I'm feeling it, right? I'm feeling it. But there's people in front of me pulling away uh. and i'm like they got it they, they got it because they're i'm running the fastest i can possibly run and wow. they're gone so i finished the the thing i finished the mile in like 6 30 6 45 something like that okay. um which is the fastest mile i've ever run now there were people oh, okay there are people in high school no no i mean sorry that no in high, in high school i probably got a, i was a little faster a little faster okay. in high school and but at that time i'm in my mid to late 30s so I'm happy with the time. Mm -hmm. um, I remember there were people in my high school who were running four minute miles. So I'm nowhere near that, but I'm happy with the time, sub seven. Oof. And yeah, mm -hmm. I remember being like, yo, I was booking it. 
but they were people faster. Mm. And I was near my peak of, of what I could expect for myself at the time. But their peak is going to be faster. They're just people who are built to run. There are people who have been mm -hmm. running like that for years and years and years. And mm -hmm. I was just working myself up from a guy going in the gym, the guy playing sports, to being a runner at that speed. At that that, that's what I was wondering. Let me ask you, what, did you train from running season back in March or did you start later? That's what I was wondering. I trained from the year before. From So from the year before up until the race, you up, had up, the yeah. constant. Oh, right. Wow, so, okay. So, um, I didn't know I was going to be in that race, but I had been running, like mm. I'm running in a in a running group with the, called the Road Runners, mm -hmm. a year prior to that. And one of my friends had got me into that, because um, she and, she and I we wanted a reason to to just be able to say hello, right? Because a reason to, to meet up and continue our mm. friendship. And so we both enrolled in that group, and that would be our reason our, our reason to to just catch up. And so, um. Even when she kind of fell off, and even when she fell off, I, I was still going. And then I joined, mm. I joined a running group in the middle of Bronx, and then they told me they had a running group right by my house, so I was in both groups. And so, wow, you know, I've been just just trying to keep fit, you know, trying to keep my, my head clear. But the bottom line was that, um, you know, you can do everything you're supposed to do. You get to a certain point, but that's the entry point. You, you're going to still be running that race with people who've done the same thing. And it's going to shake out, and you're going to have to see where you shake out as a result of that. Right, right, and, and you know, <clears throat> I, I think it's, I'm sure it's not just me, but I, I think um, sometimes we. Matter of fact, you told me a good line. I think we were looking at um, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, mm -hmm. and you, you were like, you know, comparing yourself to him is just foolish because he's at a point where he's downshifting, and you know, he's still ahead of the street as far as fitness of success wealth accomplishments so i think this is very important you know especially this analogy that you use because it 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 hopefully this illustrates the fact that sometimes it's not about okay just because i train and i get in the door that means i'm going to get this this first place if anything it's like hey you need to do this just as a prerequisite to be in the room now where are you stack up once you get in the room you know that's that's kind of just what it is so yeah, no, I think that's 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 awesome. I I mean, and Kevin Samuels used used to say that he used to say, and not that I'm a disciple of Kevin Samuels. He's had he's definitely. <laughs> hey, has, that's a hey, full disclosure. You turn me on to him, and that's that's my guy, man. I miss him. Oh uh, yeah, Kevin Samuels. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely R.I.P. I mean, there were things where that he did that I didn't necessarily agree with. There was some mentality. Oh yeah, I didn't agree with everything. Right. There, there was some mentality. But a lot of the crazy. stuff he spoke. But a lot of stuff he spoke, man, I found out either from experience or just when I thought and reflected on my life, I'm like, you know what, if I had approached life differently, I probably would have got a better outcome. And, you know, it's funny while we're talking about him, it's <clears throat> it's unfortunate that, you know, it seemed like he was so polarizing. You either loved him or you hated him. There mm -hmm. really wasn't too much middle ground. And I can understand why some people hated him, but also... I can't understand why some people just in life are not going to really accomplish anything because let's be honest how many people are really up to the task of taking themselves to task in all aspects of life how many people actually are willing to look in the mirror and call themselves out you know there's a lot of people i follow that that are helping me to kind of mold myself because i i, I look at myself and i'm like you know what i'm not where i want to be i know where i want to go but back to the discipline, back to the willpower, back to the, the habits, you know, I, I've had to learn, I need to, to have the habits that's going to give me the outcomes that I'm looking for. So I think Kevin Samuels was definitely, you know, a, a proponent of that. You know, um, s sometimes the way he delivered the message might have been, quote unquote, harsh or whatever. But at the same time, <sighs> I agree with him, especially when it came to the fact that when he was talking to men, he didn't get much attention and no, there was no outrage when he was telling men, hey, wash your ass and, you know, clean here and wear this and, you know, shit like that. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, OK, that's he's just doing his thing. Once he started telling women, look, you're not a 10 objectively, 
you're average at best. That's when it became like, oh, hold up. Who's this Negro trying to tell me about how I'm not a 10? What you mean? I'm a queen. So, you know, I, I don't know how far down this, this rabbit hole I want to go because Lord knows, man. <laughs> right, right, That's definitely right. something I'll be looking at. Like, man. Yeah, um, you said there's no middle ground. I, I find myself in the middle um, only because... Oh, you do? Okay, so you're... Yeah, only because I, I can see what, what he was trying to do and I can take it for what it is. I mean, he was pulling back the curtain mm -hmm. on this idea that that men, and I, 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 don't, I think this was the beginning. Maybe I, was, I just wasn't listening to the right people at the time, but for me, it was mm -hmm. an awakening that men are being commoditized. Our role mm -hmm. is merely, and our worth is merely determined on how much we make. In the past, it was mm. about our potential, it was about, about our potential leadership qualities. It was about a lot of different things. Um, but now it's basically, yo, how much you making? What can you get from me? And beyond that, you're expendable. And so he mm. kind of pulled the curtain back on that and then tried to turn it around and mm -hmm. look at the other side of it and say, well, listen, if that's how you're gonna treat men, then you yourself have to be willing to be commoditized at a certain level. So I get that. He also mm -hmm. had to make money off of this though. And mm -hmm. so all this other stuff, the, sens the sensationalization of it, the trolling, mm -hmm. the, the kicking people off his pocket, all that stuff right there, I saw that for what it was. That was just, right. you need people to come. And you also saw it because you were telling me like, of course he's a troll. Oh yeah. Of course right. he's yeah. doing these things. Um, and so, but with that, you have to understand that for the views, he had to be more extreme than probably he would have been in real life. Exactly. And so, but, but, yeah, go ahead. So, like, I, I get, I get all of that, but I also think that he did open up that conversation, and I don't understand why so many people got butt hurt about it. That's the thing. Why they took it so personal? Because there's no way that you could have that level of compartment compartmentalization where you're like, I can go to a job. And I can look at myself objectively for this job. And this job is one of the most important things in my life. I don't even want a man as much as I want this job. Mm -hmm. And I can call my friends out and I can see what they're doing wrong. And I can call people out on the internet all the time. But don't you dare look at me. How can you be that self-deluded? I, I, I don't think Bruh. that that many people were living that, that level of self-delusion. I think the issue was... Bruh. He was doing it in the internet where people are allowed to be their troll selves. And so they're allowed to be a caricature of themselves and then they're allowed to act like they're deluded. You know what? <clears throat> now, I'm going to give you some pushback because you're a man just like me, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you you, you, you you were born a man, right? Like like me, right? That's a very funny, that's a very funny question. Was I? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, I'm 100% right. all man. Oh, man, you know, well, let me just go ahead on to disclose this because you might not even know this about me. Dude, I'm only 50% man. <laughs> I think we all are. No, well, I, well, well we'll I don't know about you, but I am 50% man uh -huh. and 50% beast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, <laughs> back to the seriousness. So, you know, I... I have seen in my lifetime that world that you described i think you said deluded and yeah and some other adjectives yo this is the state of people and i'm not trying to be like kevin samuels i'm just telling like it is when it comes to women the things that he said line up with the things that i've experienced like let's be real how many women want a six-figure dude with a six-pack and six cars and all this other stuff, but yet and still, there are four in the face, a two in the body, and you know, and I'm and I'm talking. I'm not trying to insult people. I'm talking objectively, like, you know, if we're being honest, there's a certain look and a certain body type, man or woman, that is most pleasing to the eye, right? So, I find it unfortunate that women. <sighs> You know, I'm, I'm gonna just go there. You know, I understand the movement about body positivity. What I don't understand is why is it not important to be healthy? 
Like, and me, I can talk from this perspective because I'm a fat ass. So I look at myself and I say, okay, sure, I love myself to a degree, but I know I don't love myself because if I really truly love myself, how much work am I doing to make sure the one vehicle to carry my brain, my organs, my spirit, why am I not doing everything I can to make sure my vehicle is in the best shape possible? Dude, I, I was thinking about this the other day. I have two no, I have two cars, I have a motorcycle, and I have a big truck. I'm a truck driver as well as a realtor. So I take better care of the vehicles I drive than the vehicle that carries my my life force, dude. Mm. Think about that. I don't put bullshit in my vehicles. I put the proper fuel, I change the oil, I don't abuse them. What is it that has me not taking the same care of myself? And then what has it where other people live similarly, but yet and still have this self grandiose feeling that, hey, I'm a queen, I'm a 10. Like that, that's what kind of attracted me to Kevin because he was willing to stand on the front line and say, yo, objectively, we have beauty standards, we have fitness standards. If you're not meeting or exceeding that, it's delusional at best to say I'm a 10 and I deserve this rare commodity. Oh, I shouldn't even say that. I deserve a, a man that's in a very small category, that there's not enough to go around. I deserve that. So, you know, you had mentioned you don't believe people live in this fantasy world, but dude, if you really think about it, I think you'll find evidence yourself that people just like the internet has definitely helped us or helped people kind of have this anonymity or, you know, be protected by the screen. But if we really look through, through life, bro, like people really believe this stuff. I don't know if they do. I here, Here's what I, I think. Mm. I think that um, mm -hmm. women, there, there are, are women that are saying this stuff, right? But they know where they stack up, honestly. They look in the mirror every day and they know what, where they stack up. They just believe that they're entitled to a certain thing in the form of a man. And so they believe if they just manifest it enough, if they say it enough, it will happen. They know they're a four in the face. Even if they didn't have the objective ability to understand it by looking in the mirror, they know that the beauty products that they buy, the clothing that they buy, the hair that they, the way they get their hair done, it's not the same as the, the constant bombardment that they're seeing in, in the media. It's not the same. They know, they know that they don't look that same way. And when they say, yeah, I'm a 10, they're saying it from the perspective of we're all 10s, right? Or I have the right, right to think I'm a 10. They're not saying, right. I think I'm Beyonce. Nobody has said that. They say, I think I'm as beautiful as Beyonce. And they say uh -huh. that from the perspective of, I think that there is someone out there that think that will value my beauty on that same level. I don't believe that there are people, there are women, or there are a majority of women, or even a large group of women walking around, looking at Beyonce, looking at Kelly Rowland, looking at themselves in the mirror and be like, I don't see the difference. I don't think that's what's happening. I just believe that they believe that in this world, they are entitled as queens to what their heart desires. Because a queen doesn't have to be pretty. A queen just has to be a queen, right? And she gets everything. By the, by the mistake of her royal birth, she gets everything. And so just I believe that the value of, of men in our society has been projected. It might not actually be low, but it's been projected to be so low that they believe that they can make these demands and get what they want. And if they don't receive it, somehow, some way, it has been communicated to them. And this is the part I don't understand where this was communicated. Somehow, some way, it was communicated to them. But if they hold out long enough, they will eventually get it. Or it's better for them not to have anything than to, to settle and get something that's not exactly what they want and maybe so, that's just the internet mentality you know like you can pick and choose you know dude uh let's let's be honest mm -hmm. i've never been on it i don't know if you have mm -hmm. have you ever heard of a website called only fans i've heard of it i've never been on it because I, i'm not gonna okay. pick for that's have right you, you're right yes yeah, 
Oh, uh huh. Have you heard? And I, I believe you're on the site. Have you heard of a site called Instagram? Um, yeah, the real estate think tanks on Instagram. I'm not personally but... right. Oh, so you? Oh, so you're not so. Now, especially player, player Stefan, but you know that's that's for another podcast. But I'm surprised you're not on there. Did you know, Instagram is basically the number one dating site. Is it, dude? You know, I had the same reaction because I'm like, hey, ain't nobody filling up my inbox trying to holler at me. And guess what? I'm also not in. There's like one or two chicks that I was um, what's the word? I was delusional and thinking, oh yeah, if I just send her a message, I'm my profile and everything is so on point that yeah, she's gonna want me. And this is what I had to learn the hard way. And and honestly, my my Instagram, it's it's public. You can go see. My Instagram is kind of lame and tame. And why that matters is because what I've had to learn recently, especially watching um, Fresh and Fit. You know, I came across them once. Um, Kevin Samuels died, and that's, I guess I'll get into how I feel about them, because they're cool, but they're they're young. See, that's why I loved Kevin. Kevin Kevin Samuels was 50-something, so yeah. he had been married twice. He had spent enough time making mistakes where when he spoke, it wasn't just, hey, this is what I heard or what I think. He right. had the experience. Yeah. But Instagram, OnlyFans, unfortunately, and fellas, if this is you, it is what it is. There are so many simps. For those who don't know what a simp is, yeah. a simp is a word that's used to describe a man that's willing to give a woman all his money, anything she asks for, and not right. really have to worry about her reciprocating or anything. You're right. So it's basically, you know, back in the day, be a sucker, you know? Right. So this is where that delusion comes from that's where in it's large. Over. Yes, you're right. right. So. They might not get these, these, they might not get most of these outcomes or similar outcomes in person, but because the internet, mm -hmm. because of OnlyFans, because yep. of Instagram, dude, I was on Facebook looking at this, I'll be nice, this big, beautiful black woman. Okay. And really, she really was pretty. She was cute, but dude, she was overweight and she was in lingerie and negligee and you could tell looking at her post that she was advertising her body she had hundreds of likes each post god knows what her only fans or instagram looked like but you know it's unfortunate that there's so many men and i love there's so many men who's not getting buns or not having sex on a regular that because of the internet, because they can whack off or do whatever they do to, the, to, to somebody doing something on a camera, these men are willing to give their time, their money, their energy to these chicks that will, will, for the most part, will take and just give you a video. And I think that is what might play a part in what we were talking about that you were saying you, you don't see it or understand why, but I think you agree now that, yeah, we definitely have platforms that are helping women kind of live this delusional life. Yeah, well, as a, as a man of God, I, I have to say, I do not condone premarital sex. But um, mm -hmm. that said- And I'm a, I'm a man of God too, that you know engages in it, but I understand and I ask for forgiveness because I, I truly am a struggling Christian that wants to be better. Amen, amen. That said, um, yeah, you're right. I, I, I dropped the ball on that. Yes, the internet itself is the reason for this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, quite honestly, you said that the that the woman that you're talking about was beautiful. I've seen women. No, 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 no. She was. She was pretty. A she's nice woman. She wasn't she's, beautiful. She was. Yeah. She was. She was, she was, she was, right. she was, yeah, cool. was okay. Yeah. I, I've but seen she was, women. She was big, bro. Okay, I've seen women that have admitted, like, mm -hmm. admittedly, in their posts, make it clear that they they know they're not attractive. Mm. But because they put revealing pictures up there, have hundreds, hundreds of thousands of followers. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I, you're right. I missed it. This whole, this whole validation through social media is validation. It. There it goes. That that's absolutely it. Um, there are there are a lot of women that don't even want to date anymore, 
because they can get all the attention they need on social media. <laughs> dude, dude, do you watch Fresh and Fit? No, I, I mean, I know who they are. I, mm-hmm. I don't like them at all, man, because I can tell that a lot of what they're saying is very short-sighted. It comes from a lack of experience. And the stuff they're saying, like somebody our age can see how short-sighted a lot of that stuff is, how yes. they're not gonna feel that way even in 10 years. But for the younger audience, I could see how it could, it could catch their eye, like, and they could want to be like, like them, basically. But some of the stuff they say is like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, yo, this is absolutely ridiculous. You yourself don't even really want. You think you want it, but you're not going to want the outcome of what you're saying, because there's going to come a time in your life where you want a meaningful relationship, and these games that you're telling people to play are going to box you out of that. And even the person that you're with when you wake up and you want that meaningful relationship, you're not going to be able to build it with them because you, the way you have established that relationship has been built on a, on a foundation where even if you tried to open up and be mean, and, and make it meaningful, it's not going to be meaningful. So, I mean, they, they paint themselves... Let me ask you this. Them. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So let me ask you this, because paint yourself in the corner, I get it. But since I actually watched them, this is what I've been able to glean from from watching them. First of all, a lot of what they spew is is after they had Kevin Samuels on their show. That's right. So that's number one. They did transform. That's after. number one. Number two, right. A lot of what they say, it, it, it makes sense because who they're talking to, who their prime audience is, is the dude that's overweight, underpaid, underachieving. And what what I feel their goal is, and I'm sure they probably would tell you too, is their goal is to get men out of the simp sucker role and put them in a position of power. Because unfortunately, well, you know, let this is this is live people. So I don't know the answer to this, and he doesn't even know I'm going to ask this. Let me ask you, especially with your experience being a man, dealing with women, do you agree or disagree? Let's start with number one. A woman that you're dating is more likely to act better when she is cognizant and aware that she has competition. See, I I don't like to put women in that role because you're, you're talking more like subconsciously you're because you because i don't think any woman is like yeah i want to compete um you're saying you're more saying that women subconsciously do these things and i don't know i just i i don't know if i necessarily want to group all women well, in a role in so, that in that respect because there are some women that are genuinely looking to get married genuinely looking to, to be in relationships and i think they're willing to to do what they need to do to be in those relationships but if you're talking about on average, right? On average, uh-huh. pull the average uh-huh. woman. Yeah, I think you can predict the, the behavior of an, a quote unquote average woman at random. But to try to make, to take that and then try to apply that to an individual who you're trying to get to know on a meaningful basis, it doesn't work like that. Now, if you're trying to go through a lot of women and you're trying to find the most, the most effective way to, to do that, then you can start employing some of those techniques. So this this is the point that I was making. Go ahead. Would you say, in your experience, mm-hmm. that women, when, and you know, I'll use an analogy, because <clears throat> you you're in the sports. So, if you're a starter on any in any sport, mm-hmm. do you play the same, typically, when there's nobody behind you to replace you, and you know you're the only one? versus you know there's a hot newcomer behind you that might be as talented or more if you're the starter are you more likely to play better and give it your all when you know you've got somebody that can replace you or when you're like well the team has nobody else i'm it so i you you get what you get no see that's the thing is you're going to get a different version of me i'm not trying to be devil's advocate it's just if i believe somebody's constantly on my heels i can't get comfortable and take risks so what you're going to see is me being conservative and playing to my strengths only. Now, if I'm able to feel like I can take ownership of, of the situation, 
then I can be more risky. Then we can try things out, and we might we might find new things that work. And so, same thing with the relationship. If a woman feels like she can be replaced at any moment, she's going to act one way, and you're not going to fully you're going to you're not going to get her fullness. You're not going to get a fuller version of her. Where she, when she feels like she's willing to be committed and feels like committing too, then you're going to get a different and more full version of her, less transactional. And so, I mean, there's both. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say, you know, I, I like to disclose and be transparent. I think you're being a lawyer. I think that's your lawyer answer. <laughs> I think not being a lawyer. I, I, I think I, I agree with you to an extent. Like, for example, I won't say names because this isn't about, you know, blowing up people's spots. Well, but I dated a lady back in the day. You know who I'm talking about. Uh -huh. And when she hears this, she didn't, she'll know who she's talking about. But I didn't have that concern with her because I felt like in that situation, it truly was for the most part just about you and I, or her and I. Yeah, not me and you. <laughs> right, yeah, no, no. We Well, we haven't talked about that, but no, we're just, we're friends, we're both men in the traditional sense, so yeah. But um, I think when it came to our relationship, it was, I didn't have to put on, I didn't have to, you know, have, have competition for her because she just understood. Now, I'll mention somebody who I've, well, I won't mention, but I'll compare to somebody, somebody who I've dated too. more recently right. um, that I, I feel like, and it's been told to me, the fact that it was just her for such a long time, Matter of fact, I'll even be more transparent. I won't even say it's just her. I feel like even myself, mm -hmm. I got comfortable because we dated so long that it was like, well, if I really had competition, she wouldn't be here. So do I have to really be on top of my game? You know, maybe I can put on this crappy outfit with the stain in the shirt. Oh, okay, I didn't get up and immediately wash my butt. So, eh, you know, it should be all right. So I understand what you're saying, but I think in some cases and to some degree, especially when you're dating, not when you're married, when you're married, I feel like that's, it's well, different. that's once different. again, I agree with Kevin, that's the end game for women is marriage. So I'll even say for men, sure, end game, all right, cool. But I feel like once you're in the end game, then it's like, okay, you don't have to impress me or worry about keeping me. But when you're in that dating and you, you haven't really married, I, I can see how some women sometimes will say, well, I got you, so I ain't, I don't gotta be on my best behavior because where are you going? So I feel like the quote unquote players or, or the men that have, that are dating multiple women, I feel their benefit is, especially if the man is honest, which he should be, the women have the ability to say, okay, I either don't wanna be part of competition because I just want a man to myself and he gets what he gets, but also, I, I understand there are women that are like, hmm, I have to earn this man's time. I have to earn this man's um, energy and effort. And I, I know he's dating other women. So if I'm not coming correct, he's got options. So I, that's, I think that's the part that I agree with that. I feel like the understanding I have is there's, there's a lot of situations where it makes sense to have options because if one is not acting right, you can move on and you can kind of put her on a back burner. And if she wants to give you a reason for to promote her, cool. If she doesn't, that's why I believe options are good. I uh, see the thing about it is that if you are with someone, right, and they're not acting right, and you feel like them knowing that you have options is gonna get them to mm -hmm. get them to act right, then you're not with the right person. That person Agreed. is actually showing you that they don't value you through their Agreed. behavior. That same person, if they met a celebrity and that celebrity said, listen, I'm going to need you to be on your best behavior, would in a heartbeat transform into a different version of themselves than what you're seeing. And so people communicate through very various ways and behavior is one of them. And the funny thing is that it might even be subconscious. They might have valued you subconsciously at a certain, at a certain level. So with their mouth, they're telling you one thing they're telling you that they want one thing and they genuinely believe they want that but subconsciously they're showing you and communicating to you another a totally different thing with their behavior 
And so you have to read both levels of communication. And I think the idea of, well, they should have competi women need competition to act right is just a response to the inability for, of some guys to see in women what they want to see. And that just means they haven't found the right one yet. Now, you know what this makes me think about? You pointed out how she would act for a celebrity. Mm -hmm. Tell me some things that make a celebrity a celebrity, because this is what Fresh and Fit is about. What what things what what makes a celebrity a celebrity? Why would a woman act a certain way because of a celebrity? Now that that role is, is constantly changing, but um, you know, it, it, there's influence. Uh, well, okay, so then variety. Uh, ideal, uh, presumably, there's wealth. There's not always wealth, though. There's not, there's not always wealth, but there's oh, okay, but there's money. Maybe not wealth, but fast Pres cash or presumably a lot of cash. Sometimes, yeah. Well, you you think women well, are? I mean, but also. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who are, there are people who are yeah, famous that are that are just famous. They they don't make a lot of money off their fame, um, and they're well known, but they just don't make a lot of money off their fame because they haven't found a way to monetize it properly. I think no, 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 no. What I'm talking about, what, what, what? Who would you name that a woman would be on her best behavior? This is what I'm talking about. Well, name somebody because I got somebody in mind. Like name somebody that would make that a woman would like, be on her best behavior for. Like, like an actor, like Michael B. Jordan or someone like that. My, okay, Michael B. Jordan. I was thinking Drake. So okay, we can okay, use Drake. both of them. Let's yeah, let's be honest. Aren't both of them they, they got some millions. Yeah, they, they've got some money, yeah. It, yeah. So those are the kind of people that I feel like a woman's gonna be on, on her best behavior. If you're a freaking host for NPR, <laughs> like you know, I don't think they get paid that much. Like I've never seen anybody balling on NPR or, you know, with a bunch of women. But Michael B. Jordan, women will freaking cut their sister's head off for, you know, theoretically. Um, Drake, forget about it. So, so I'm sure you agree, in general, women are hypergamous, would you? No, I, I don't I don't think that in general women mm. are hypergamous. Here's and I, I think mm -hmm. we've been sold the bill of goods like with that. I think people have repeated that enough that that now it's the thing to say. Just like I don't think it's hypergamy. Yeah, I, I don't think that women are, are not are okay. Let me, let's back it up. I don't think our society requires women to be hypergamous. There is, no. there is a innate nature in us. It's been proven from mm -hmm. from the time that's before we were able to establish these social networks, where mm -hmm. communication was much more simple. It's been proven that a woman was incentivized to find the strongest male mm -hmm. and and mate with them. And there were with the most resources. Well, the strongest male either being the largest or the most resources, because large is like the potential, right? Mm -hmm. The most fierce, the most fierce. That, that gives you the potential for the, for that person to go out and get the most resources. Or if he already has the most resources, then you don't have to go off the potential. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. cause remember, remember naturally women want their just, just, um, naturally and biologically, they want their offspring to one, have the best genes. That's where I was going with it. For the, for the okay, best, cool. For the best yep. genes. And but, to take care of. Mm -hmm. Right. But then they seek out the most nurturing male to raise the child. So mm. it, it had been, it has- Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you saying women are more concerned about the man being a nurturer than herself? No, she's she's gonna fulfill her, her role as a nurturer, but mm -hmm. a traditionally and historically, it has been shown that the the conqueror, the, the, the bigger guy, the hunter, is not going to be the one that stays home. They're going to be in the battlefield. They're mm -hmm. going to be in the forest. So there, there typically mm -hmm. were two, two main uh, traditionally traditionally male body types, which were the hunter-gatherer and the uh, the warrior. So the warriors mm -hmm. were the protectors, hunter-gatherers were the were the athletes. They were able to catch the food. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there there were the you know the ones that stayed in the the village. And those those were your philosophers, and those were your your teachers, and all those other, all these other okay. male 
male uh, roles, traditionally male roles, but that were less physical. And so it was, it's, it's been sociologically proven that that is the default behavior of the woman, to seek the best genes and then to seek a male figure, not necessarily the same male figure, to come behind and raise. Then we started to socialize things and we started to realize that there is this, there's an order that has to be put to things. And then, you know, also, you know, God gave us an order and we, we began to, to follow it more. Um, and so there was this order for things and we started to realize, you know, one man, one, one wife. And when you do that, society is a little bit more stable because then you can create a family unit and then that family unit, everybody's bought into that family unit, right? Because everybody's from the same parents. So they have that commonality. And then once you have family units, you can create communities off of that. And so I don't believe that we need to accept hypergamy in the sense that that um, in the way that it is now, where women just keep looking up. <laughs> I was going to say, because hey, we are where we are. Uh -huh. Right. We're, women just constantly look up and never look around. That doesn't make any sense, because if, if that leads to 97% of women being single or 95 or 90% of women sharing the same 5% of guys, that doesn't make any sense. And that actually just puts okay, us right well, back where we were. Well, I guess I just talked myself in a circle. <laughs> I, I, but see, but and you know, this is why we're, we're, it's beautiful we're both here because we get to balance. Yeah. So this is what I'm going to ask you. Uh -huh. So I don't know how much of your life you're willing to talk about, mm -hmm. but I've never been married. You have. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you want to use from your own personal experience? Because I mean, me never having been married, what I see is you know, I'm able to, you know, especially being on Instagram now and then and social media, I, I see how it's so easy for a woman to say, okay, I'm with an average guy making average money, which let's be honest, the average man makes 40, 50 grand. He's five foot, what, eight or nine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so what I see is women are always looking for somebody who makes more money who's taller, who's in more shape. And yes, yeah, social media has given, matter of fact, are you aware that women today have more access than movie stars 50 years ago? Like movie stars 50 years ago don't have the access and the reach that the average woman has today. Are we yeah, aware of that? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Because, because like you can just, you can the, open up your phone and access the entire world. Mm-hmm. There's some movie stars who would make movies in LA and they wouldn't even make it to New York. See? See? So I think all of this plays a part into what we're talking about. And this is a very deep rabbit hole that I know we can go on and on, but let's um let's start kind of giving some final points so that we can put a bow on this episode. But this is, you know, listeners, I guarantee you, for especially for the for those who want to hear more. We will be back on this topic because this is what's made Fresh and Fit so popular. This is not what, what made Kevin Samuel so popular. It's, it's talking about what's been going on, where we're at now, what the future looks like. So. Yeah, I totally didn't. Now I want to talk about relationships and, and <laughs> more of the sexes. I, I totally think that that's such a cop out. Just so if we're making our final points, I, I think it's a cop. I think we have jumped down this rabbit hole with the war of the sexes and it's it's not helpful to anyone except the people making money off of it um and i see now i, I, I get pushback uh, my pushback on that is what does the man who is not living his potential and basically average because i'm a man mm -hmm. and honestly with with all the things i've accomplished i'm the type of person that I appreciate when other people see what I've accomplished. I'm not the type that's going to beat my chest, even when it's deservingly so. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, what about the people who aren't very accomplished that are, you know, in their mother's basement? They're they're not getting, you know, sex on a regular. Like, what do you recommend for somebody like that? That's like, hey, 
I'm on OnlyFans because this is the only way I can have access to a somewhat or 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 an attractive woman is virtually like what is your advice because the reality is that woman that is somewhat or even attractive has the ability to to show her body and get so much attention because i think that's where fresh and fit and even kevin samuels come in place actually be honest with you don't have an answer to that i'm not living that experience i'm six foot three mm -hmm. i'm not unattractive mm -hmm. i'm 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 in shape and i'm well educated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I make over six, three dudes. So, see, you're do you know how tall the average man is? Because I said it was like five, seven, five, eight. Yeah, it's, it's five, five, eight, five, nine. Yeah, right. That's that. That's the average, right? So, me, I'm like five, eleven. So, even my height is a little above average, even though I might be overweight. My height, you know, I feel like, and then I'm not, which you know, and this is this was beautiful. It's a podcast, but. Deep inside, I don't think I'm ugly, but I don't think I move in the world with the confidence that I should be moving. Right, but you're not an incel because you're in a long-term relationship. Right. You're, so, you know, you're not... Well, 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 well no, no, hold, hold, wait. Okay, hold, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold, but, hold on. I am, I am not, <laughs> I'm not in a relationship. I'm, I, I'm because sorry. Because the long-term relationship, I, no, no, you're good. I just want to make this public and I want to tell this to you on a on a forum that I know is going to go public. Uh -huh. I am not in a long-term relationship. I have been, okay. but I've decided because I'm not, because I'm not getting what I'm looking for, uh -huh. even though I've postponed ending the relationship for, you know, I guess that's a topic for another podcast. I have been for a long time, and I'm sure you can attest to this. I've been crying to you about, hey, I'm looking for ABC, but I'm accepting X, Y, Z. So right now, today at this point, yeah, I'm I'm single and I'm actually putting more value on myself because, well, you know what? Let's let's end it with this. I see, or I feel like I've accepted stuff that I didn't have to accept, but because of my low self-esteem, I have accepted a lot of things that I don't have to. Now, I'm, I'm just, since this is public, I'm not saying I'm an angel and I do everything right. What I'm saying is from my perspective, I have tolerated things that I know men with more confidence wouldn't tolerate. So I guess that's why it's good talking about this because I'm, I feel like I have been accepting things I shouldn't have. And, and I guess that's what's unique about me is even though I might be overweight. I'm not ugly. I'm accomplished. You know, I, I run my own business, which I'm not very open about. I actually, I run a couple businesses, you know, being a realtor and building a trucking company. But I, I'm the type of guy, since I'm no longer a simp, I don't lead with my accomplishments. I lead with my personality. And that's a whole nother podcast because I, I, there's already a bunch of rabbit holes that I'd like to go down. But my question to you is, what do you think the guy who's less accomplished, who doesn't have the confidence, what do you think their options are who's not having sex on a regular, who, who doesn't have a long-term friend or relationship or somebody they can pick up the phone and be like, hey, what you doing, come over. Well, well, you know, because I think that's where Fresh and Fit and Kevin Samuels and other people come in because they get to help these guys see their value. I'm not so sure that's what they're doing, man. But again, we, we do have to wrap up. Um, yes, and my phone is on 3%. So. All right. So my advice to them would be the first step is to uh, just start doing something. Find something that you like to do and find a way to monetize it. And I agree. get in the gym. And the reason why... Get get in the gym is so important, dude. That's, reason why that's so important. Once, once you get that adrenaline going, once that testosterone starts to to pump, you do that for a couple of days in a row and don't give up. If you don't give up, you go like a month and don't give up. Your mindset is going to change. And that first month is so crucial. If you've never really done the gym like that, the change that happens after that first month, after those first two months, actually, mentally and also physically is something I cannot describe to you. I've been going to the gym consistently for about 10 years now. But mm -hmm. 
month two, and then also, and then going forward into month three, when I start to notice, oh, I'm, I'm getting these results, I'm stronger, I'm thinner, I'm faster. What I thought was possible was amazing. It wasn't about me anymore. It wasn't about my limitations anymore. It was about what I'm going to do. So I would, I would do those, those two things. Um, but I also recognize this, this world is, this society right now is not set up for, for men to feel valued. It's not set up exactly. for men to feel accepted. We do not have even a third of the support that women get. And that makes it rough. All right. Exactly. All right, those are my so, parting thoughts. Okay. So, all right, people, I'm full disclosure. I'm plugging up my phone. So we're going to end right here. Um, Stefan, tell people where we can find you if, if you want people to find you. Yeah, if you want to find me, I am out there on uh, Stefan, Martin, Stefan Martin on Facebook. But um, my real platform is the Real Estate Think Tank. So the mm. real estate think tank com. That's our website, Retret for short. Um, we're on Twitter, although I haven't tweeted in a while. We're on Facebook. Um, we're on LinkedIn. We're on Instagram. All major social media platforms. Just not Snapchat. And, yeah, Snapchat's the only one we're not on. Um, so yeah, you can find me there, therealestatethinktank.com. And you know what, to wrap up, what's a shame, because I like to be honest, that's why I believe this is a good platform and, and a good um, process. You told me maybe two months ago that my Instagram had been hacked. Actually, you weren't even sure. Mm -hmm. What you had asked me was, hey, Conrad, are you pushing Bitcoin on your Twitter? Yeah. And I was like, uh, no. So you made me aware that I, uh, on Twitter, which I didn't even mention because I, I haven't been on there forever, but on Twitter, somebody is has hacked my account and pushing Bitcoin. So I just think that's funny because um, you told me about this and I haven't addressed it yet. So um, I guess, yeah, my final closing message is to the dude or chick, whoever, whatever you are, that's on Twitter under my name, pushing Bitcoin, since you have not given me a dollar, I'm going to fix this. And I, I don't appreciate, like, go do your own thing. You feel me? Like, that? that's just nonsense. But anyway, look, this was the landing strip. Longest episode, awesome episode. We're going to put this together so everybody can hear it. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And Stefan, it's been a pleasure having you. Thanks. You know, everybody else thinks that this is just, you know, some some thing just for views and ratings no this is what my podcast is about this conversation i had on this podcast is some is a conversation i would have with him without recording so that that's the goal of my podcast is to 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 bring people into the conversation please like share leave a comment if you agree cool if you disagree cool let it be known and until next time peace out people